Hello and welcome to One More Pen. Something very interesting today and very unexpected. I was planning to do an unboxing of a Faber-Castell grip fountain pen and then compare it with a um, previous grip that I owned that um, wasn't writing so well. The nib is really horrible and scratchy. And I found this one on a, in a, on a special and I thought I'd buy it and compare the two. But what happened um, when I unboxed this pen and it's on video, you will see everything later. I just want to tell you what you're going to see. Um, I found that the packaging, the, um, the cartridges, um, it, it contains six cartridges and um, three out of the six cartridges were pierced and empty. So they appear to have been used. Um, they, they were pierced, like when you insert a cartridge into a pen, uh, they were not damaged in any other way. So that's the only conclusion that I can reach is that three out of the six cartridges were actually used, um, leaked onto the box and I, I saw some ink on the box when I bought it and I thought well maybe one cartridge leaked, no biggie, I don't care about that, right. Um, but another interesting thing is when I um, unscrewed the, um, the section and the barrel, inside um, there was an, I, I think just a plastic can I call it a placeholder? It's not, it's not an actual cartridge, which I expect to find there, as well as another um, cartridge. And there was ink inside um, the pen, um, and I had to take a needle to get the, um, the actual cartridge out of the barrel because it was stuck in there because of the ink that had dried around it. But that cartridge was not used. So how did the ink get inside the barrel of the pen. Um, so you see all of this as I unpackage it. Um, it was a sealed blister pack as you will see and you hear my thoughts as I unpackage this. Now um, this is not a good look for Faber-Castell. It's not a good look for the company where um, I bought the pen which is Macro in Port Elizabeth and uh, I don't know where this happened or exactly what happened. So um, I thought about it and I was wondering is there any way that this could have happened other than that this package was opened and that somebody um, you know interfered that somebody used the cartridge or somebody used the pen and repackaged it that was that's my thought um, when I did the the unboxing if you can think of any other explanation please let me know in the comments I would love to hear your theories and um, you know whether whether this is possible or you know am I making sense that I think this package was opened and it was um, you know it was resealed um, but I don't know if that's really possible so just to be clear I'm not saying that this is Faber-Castell who did it I'm not saying that it's Macro who did it but you see the video as I unpackage it and I'm, I'm going to just um, f you know right now I'm going to switch over to the actual start of the video and you can watch the whole thing and then you can give me your opinion. I'd love to hear from you. Here we go. Hello and welcome to One More Pen. Today I'm talking about the Faber-Castell Grip. Uh, now this one I've had for quite a while and I don't want to say it but I have to is the worst pen that I've ever had, the worst fountain pen. Uh, it is not that everything is bad about this pen, it is that the one thing that determines whether you can actually use the pen or not, which is the nib on this pen is absolutely horrible. It has a fine nib and it is the scratchiest nib I have ever had. I've had a look at it, I've I used a loop and I tried to see if the tines are misaligned or anything like that. I really cannot find anything obviously wrong with it. Now, of course, I don't you know that's not my area um, you know I, I use pens and I look at pens from the perspective of the average person you know would the average person be able to use this pen if they bought it out of the box and this one no I don't think the average person would so I try I used it a couple of times I used it for a while I, I think I used one or two ink cartridges and I just said no it is you know it's such a horrible experience and I, and it's been in my drawer uh, for uh, quite a while now and um, then I found um, another one um, it's still boxed essentially and it's it's the same thing it's Faber-Castell grip 
But the one difference is that this is a medium and the one that I have is a fine. So I was wondering whether the medium would provide a different experience. Now usually I don't buy more pens if you know of the same brand and model if I had horrible experience with one um, because that just doesn't make sense. But since I am looking into them and since I'm you know I, I do want to give this pen a second chance because it does have some good qualities. There are some things about this pen that's really nice. Except, you know, if the nib is horrible, then it spoils everything. So I'm going to unbox this one today. We're going to compare the two. See if this one, oops, see if this one is any better. Whether it's usable. Um, if it's really just a nib, then maybe this pen can be redeemed somehow. And so that's what we'll do today. We're going to uh, unbox that one. We'll do a comparison, a deeper dive. Uh, and I'll do a writing sample. I'll be comparing the two. We can see how they stack up. Um, and then, then, you know, we can decide, you know, if, if this pen is worth it. Um, by the way, I, I bought this one because I found it at more than 50% discount. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have bought another one while I have one that's uh, that's not great but it gives us the opportunity to look at it again now if you like this kind of content I would invite you to subscribe like and please leave a comment if you have one of these and I know a lot of people have them because they are reasonably affordable not the cheapest one out there but they you know they're sort of in the entry entry um, level range in terms of price if you have one let me know what yours is like you know whether whether you have any issues with the nib or whether it's giving you a good writing experience okay let's head over uh, and have a closer look all right let's have a closer look at what we have here um should i start by unboxing this one maybe i think and these blister packs can be hard to open so i'll be using trusty scissors and i'm just going to be cutting it open No other way to do it. All right, let's put that away. All right. So let's take it out. And this is the Faber Castell Krupp, and this one does come in a medium. And I must say it's quite a nice color and a little bit different from uh, this gray version. So this one, it, it it's like a matte finish while well, this one is obviously gloss and I actually must say immediately I do like the gloss look. It's actually quite nice. So that's the first thing that I noticed. But if we have a closer look at this pin. It, uh, it's a snap cap and it caps very tight as you can see. Well right at the top we have the Faber-Castell uh, logo there. We have on the cap as well, not so easy to see, uh, just Faber-Castell. Don't know how visible that will be. Sticker at the back that I'll peel off later. We have the clip which is this spring loaded i do believe it may be spring loaded it feels like it this one feels like it and it's actually quite a nice clip i, I do like this I, I like that it's flat at the bottom there there's nothing on the clip but i do like it it's it's very very user friendly uh, very functional and then we have these uh, plastic studs on the barrel which I suppose where partly where the name grip comes from or what it refers to and then also we have a rubber grip on the section which I suppose between the the plastic studs and the rubber grip we have the Faber-Castell grip actually looks quite nice now the rubber grip it has a it's a very nice texture I can see why it's called the grip because there is no way your fingers will 
you know, will slip or that this is going to become uh, slippery in any way, even if you have a long writing session. But I'm not crazy about rubber sections because rubber does not tend to last very long and after a while this it, it gets hard and it starts to perish. And so for me, whenever you have a rubber on a pen, it's always an indication that this pen, it's, it's made for comfort, but probably not uh, to last. Anyway, that's just my opinion. If we have a closer look at the nib, uh, this is a medium nib. These nibs look very nice. That it's got, um, it's it's nicely textured. It's got the Faber Castell logo. Let's open the other one and cap this one as well, so we can compare the two. We have a fine nib, and we have a medium nib. Really nice looking and very interesting. The um, section on this one being black and this one's still gray so this is more of a blue gray while this is more of a silver i suppose and at the bottom there is just a little a little it's not a hole um, but that's that's all you have right there section unscrews and we have wow something inside that appears to have leaked. I don't know if there's something else in there. So this is interesting. This is interesting. You just saw me unbox it. Now, I did notice this, but I didn't give it much thought. So it comes with six cartridges and I have noticed on the packaging that there appears to have been a leak somewhere. And This is very interesting. Wait, well, this is this is empty. I mean, this is not a real cartridge, and this was inside the pin, and I I cannot really see inside there. Let me just have a closer look. There might be. Is there something in there? It's very hard to see. But. It appears that there's a cartridge uh, stuck in there that may be where the leak is coming from because this is not a cartridge, this is this just falls in space. And I don't think the leak came from uh, from in here. I don't know, um, maybe a bit. So this is very interesting. Very interesting Faber Castell. What do we have here? We have here what appears to be a pin that has been repackaged with cartridges that have been used. As you can see, you literally saw me unbox this. I'm very surprised by this. So this cartridge looks fine. This one is fine. This one is unopened. This one is opened this one not so i have three cartridges here that have been used they are basically empty um, been placed back in the box continue to leak and i have one cartridge stuck in the barrel that um, obviously has been leaking so how to get how to get that out i am not sure because it's stuck in there pretty good. Now this is very interesting because this was sealed in a blister pack. So, you know, what happened here? Was this a pen that was returned and resealed? Um, and by the way, I bought this at Macro in Port Elizabeth or Tabeja, South Africa. So Macro probably has something to answer for in terms of the packaging. I'm pretty sure I didn't keep the, the sales slip uh, because why would I for something that I paid half price for? And now I understand why, but there was no indication that this, I mean, this was a sealed package. 
Uh, so no indication that there was anything wrong with it other than, you know, that it was some kind of promotion. So I'm going to try and find something and see if I can get the, um, even have these little balls coming uh, from the uh, cartridges that have been opened. So, so far, I thought that I'm giving Faber-Castell a chance to redeem itself now. Probably Faber-Castell, the company, has nothing to do with what happened here, but it's not a good look. I think everyone will agree with me. This is not a good look for Faber-Castell and it is not good for Macro either. Um, but let me get something and try to get that cartridge out of this barrel and see if we can do something with it. So I've got this uh, syringe and needle that I use to clean my, um, especially my cartridges sometimes. I, I don't recommend using a needle like this because this one is a real needle. It is pretty sharp and it's pretty big. So this thing will tattoo you real good and I was just thinking that maybe this is one way. I don't know if this will work. If I pierce it, there we go. Now, of course, I've messed up this cartridge because now it's unusable. But I thought that it was already used since something's been leaking all over the pen. But uh, anyway, I don't feel like using any of this actually because I'm not at all impressed with Faber-Castell. But I don't think I'm going to be using any of the cartridges. I think I will just dip the pens in an ink and uh, we will do a writing sample. Let me just wipe this down. So this is quite a disappointing turn of events, but I guess, I'm, I guess it's good that I have this on, uh, on, on camera. I don't know. I don't know. It would be interesting to hear from Faber-Castell or Macro. I don't know who's responsible for this, but uh, obviously it is completely unacceptable from a consumer perspective and it is a very bad look for the brand. Um, whether this is Faber-Castell or not, it does not look good for them. I was planning to use the Waterman Serenity Blue uh, because I haven't used this ink for a while and it is a really nice ink. Now I just wonder... The nip does appear to be clean. So I don't know if this, if the nib has been used before or not. But let's see what we can do here. I think first I'm going to start with this pen that's been giving me grief. Um, and I'm just going to dip it. Usually I just refill my pens properly. Quick wipe. But since I'm not planning to actually use this pen, uh, perhaps this is the way to go. So, this is the Faber-Castell uh, grip. You can probably hear this scratch on this nib. This is a fine nib. And it's not, it's not a dry nib at all, it's fairly wet. Now I do think the paper that you use probably makes a difference um, in how a nib performs. So no real flex on the nib, no surprise, it's a standard steel nib. But you can squeeze a little bit of line variation from it and it does have, when you put a little bit of pressure on it, you do you get a little bit of springiness in the nib, which is not bad at all.
yeah it is not it's not really usable i mean usable uh, in the sense that can you use it yes do you want to i don't think so but this is the original uh the first one the the one that i don't like using so i'll put that one aside and we will give the brand new brand new because obviously this is not brand new uh, but we'll give this one a try i don't know if it's it's possible that it's never been used who knows i just i just want to wipe it down get rid of the excess ink and well let's see what happens Harper Castell grip with a medium nib. Now you can tell the enormous difference immediately between these two pens. This is a very wet nib, which, you know, for me that's great. I love a wet nib, so you can see there. Um, it is also quite smooth. Very pleasant. No real line variation. The, 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 there is a springiness to the nib. Um, This is actually quite pleasant um, and this is what I was hoping for. I was really hoping that um, the first grip that I bought that it is just an anomaly and that it is just a nib on this one and well maybe it's a, what a fine writes like uh, for these pens but yeah it's not great uh, but this is what I was hoping for because this pen has a lot going for it. It has a rather unique design I think it, it's quite nice. It's a quite nice design. Let me just get rid of the ink there. Because we have ink all over the place now, but this time not my fault. But a rather nice design. It's especially this version. I'm not crazy about the I'm not crazy about this one. The there is something about, you know, it obviously has a with the silver a metal look um, but it's very obviously plastic and therefore it, it you know you I think if you if something is plastic you shouldn't try and pretend that it's something else you should make the most of the material that you use and that's exactly what this version does it is clearly plastic but it looks really good and so this is a nice looking pen um, the the section is very comfortable the pin is large enough does it post it posts very well very securely but i think it's actually quite long if you post it but there's no need um, to post it the pin is big enough and it's really nothing wrong with it except that i'm getting ink all over it um yeah would i recommend buying one of these I might have recommended buying one of these, but now I feel like I need to qualify what I'm saying and say to you, if you can buy one, check whether it's been opened or not, because, you know, now probably it's just the one that I bought. I find it strange that the first grip that I bought was um, really not great. The second one, okay, it wasn't special. It was half price, but... Um, a sealed blister pack and cartridges three of the cartridges being used that is not okay um, no matter what the circumstances no matter what the discount and that is not a great look for faber Castell, unfortunately however if you're okay with taking this kind of a risk i do think this pin is quite nice at its normal price i think it's a little bit expensive for an entry-level pen like this 
Um, it's more expensive. I don't know the exact price, but it's more expensive, for example, than the Pilot Metropolitan. I think the Pilot Metropolitan is a better buy. It's a it's a metal pen, um, but there's nothing wrong with this. And I think if you can get it at a good price, um, especially if you get the medium, I wouldn't recommend the fine at this stage, but the medium seems to be quite nice. So I'll be using this for a while now and put it through its paces and perhaps at some point I'll do um, a follow-up review and tell you more about it. I don't know if I'll find out anything about what happened with the packaging. If I do, I'll post an update. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time.